Hello viewers, welcome to this session on entrepreneurship and innovation. Today the topic before us is how to systematically think of innovation. Now, look at that, Global Innovation Index 2020. As part of this index, India stands at rank 48. Whereas if you compare this with China, China is at the rank 14. So what does this mean? Though demographically India is more advantageous than China, it only means that we as a country need to think more innovatively. So many times in our pedagogy, in our lessons, in entrepreneurship, as students we have come across a term called entrepreneurial mindset. So today the topic that I am going to elaborate, how to systematically think about innovation, how to develop that entrepreneurial mindset is what we are going to discuss and see. So I am taking the help of a famous seminal work and a book that was written by the management guru Peter Drucker in 1985. The book is titled Innovation and Entrepreneurship. Now in this seminal work, Peter Drucker backtracked entrepreneurship, he connected it to innovation and he backtracked it to the opportunities that we as young leaders of today can find in the environment around us and we can scan this environment, we can scan these opportunities and come up with innovative solutions and also come up with good startups here in the country. Now, my discussion with you today is based on the seven sources of innovation. So, the first source is the unexpected. Now, what do I mean with unexpected is something like this. Every organization, every life, every group has to clearly scan the successes and failures that it undergoes. Because in these successes, in these failures are hidden the sources of innovation. And here I would like to take the example of a dynamite. The dynamite was invented in 1866 by someone called Alfred Nobel. Now some of you may have heard this name before also. But as a precursor to the invention of dynamite, it was in 1846 that nitroglycerin was invented. Nitroglycerin. So the chemical formula is C3, H5, NO3 and hole inside 3. So this nitroglycerin is a liquid and one of the key properties of nitroglycerin is that it detonates when friction or some pressure is applied to it. So in 1946, a scientist named Ascanio Sobrero invented nitroglycerin. Now, Sobrero, because he knew this damaging property of nitroglycerin, he was against the commercialization of this compound. But it was in 1866 and little before that when Alfred Nobel landed on the scene. Alfred Nobel's father had a business in explosives and when the business was do not doing too well, Alfred Nobel started experimenting with nitroglycerin. One day accidentally, unexpectedly, his brother died in one of these experiments. And this became all the more emotional for Alfred Nobel to now come up with a marketable product of nitroglycerin so that its explosive nature can be preserved while the damaging consequences of nitroglycerin can be preserved. So what did Alfred Nobel do? One day while he was taking a walk by the lake, he stumbled upon some clay and he took that clay to his laboratory and did some experimentation and found out that the silica which is within that clay is very useful for packaging nitroglycerin 
in a package like this which came to be known as dynamite. So you could transport the dynamite from one place to another preserving its explosive property but keeping it quite safe and contained within the container. Now as usual as time passed by the dynamite became used for terrorist activities also and for the remorse that Alfred Nobel underwent he established the Nobel Prize Foundation as we know it as Nobel Prize today. So the fortune that Alfred Nobel earned out of marketing dynamite is given away every year as Nobel Prize. So this is an example how the unexpected can be utilized in forms to come up with innovation. Now let's talk about the second source of innovation which is incongruities. Now what do we mean by incongruities? The difference between the reality and the perception of the reality is incongruity. So you see what it is but that's not exactly what it is. So let's take an example. In the early 1990s, the MNCs never wanted to do business in India. They considered India as a predominantly poor country and a large number of population was below the poverty line. So MNCs always thought that the Indian population doesn't have the spending capacity to buy its products. But it all changed in 2004 when Professor C.K. Prahlad who came up with this theory fortune at the bottom of pyramid fortune at the bottom of the pyramid now what does this theory say this theory says that though the poor of the country are at the bottom of the pyramid they are so large in number that even if you sell a product which is of less ticket value but because of the volumes are so high any company can earn profit and this became the path breaking time for the MNC companies and companies like Hindustan Unilever they started introducing their products in the sachet form so as you can see in this picture so today the situation is like this 70% of the shampoos by volume that are sold are in the form of sachets and these companies like HUL are earning a good profit margin between 7 to 15 percent in these sachets. So we see that how incongruities can also be sources for innovation in our environment and therefore we should not discard the incongruities but think deeply about these incongruities and work towards doing something innovative on the basis of seeing and observing such incongruities. Now let's talk about the third source of innovation. The third source of innovation is process need. Now we all have seen and observed and experienced processes that are broken processes that are inefficient processes that are having weak links but nobody does anything about it so when you see such processes there is an opportunity for doing something innovative to fix that process now something like this was done by mcdonald's now in 1948 two brothers robert and morris mcdonald they came up with a solution to fix this problem. They saw that as you walk into the restaurants, you had to wait along for your food to be served. So this was draining for the people, especially in the fast life that America was having at that point in time. So what did Robert and Morris McDonald do? They invented the assembly line cons concept to the food industry. Now what did happen? The kitchen of McDonald's had many workers who were given some functional responsibilities on the basis of division of labor. Someone made a burger, someone put the sauce, 
someone put the cheese and at the end of 3 minutes the burger was ready and that was the promise of McDonald's we will serve you food in 3 minutes so today the result of this fixing of the process is that McDonald's operates in almost 160 countries of the world and it has 37,000 restaurants across the world and the name FAST that has been added to food is the credit of McDonald's. So today we have a big fast food industry and we also have a term that is called as QSR or quick service restaurants. So all this breaking innovation has happened because of McDonald's. So as you see, as students when we see our environment, we can always scan for opportunities where some process is broken and it becomes a bedrock for more innovation. So moving on, let's talk about the fourth source of innovation which is market structure changes. Now what do we understand by market structure changes? So as the market progresses, as the market evolves, there are some natural changes that come up in the market. So let's take an example. So if you would have observed before the year 2000, you only had the brick and mortar banks and every time you had some banking needs, you had to walk into some branch of a bank. But come the dot com bubble and the internet banking started in India. So every brick and mortar bank now had internet banking. So it was an era wherein you had the branch banking and you had the internet banking both. But now during the pandemic we are seeing a new segment come into the market which is the word called as neo banking. What does neo banking mean? Neo banking means branchless banking, contactless banking. So you have banks like Neo which are only online banks. They don't have any brick and mortar banks. So during the pandemic, people have innovated. They have seen the change in the market structure when people's, people are not able to go to the bank for their banking services. So completely online banking is an example of a change in the market structure. Now similarly, there are other areas where you may be seeing some potential changes in the market structure and you can bank on those changes and make a startup, start an entrepreneurial venture. So coming to the fifth source of innovation is demographics. What is demographics? The compositional change in your population in terms of age, gender, employment, education, etc. So all this decide what will be bought by your population and in what quantity. So that is demographics. Let's discuss with an example. Now look at India. We have almost 60% of our population between 18 to 60. So in this large chunk of population, which is also the working class population, so we have great need of mobility. So the need of this population is mobility. This mobility needs to be affordable, its need, its need to be quality. Now according to a survey, every Indian, he travels 35 kilometers daily to reach his work. Now you can see that there is a huge market in the mobility solutions. No wonder that companies like Aether Energy, they have innovated. And what have they innovated? They have innovated electric two-wheelers. And this is a growing segment today. You see many companies now moving into this space. So the profits of Aether Energy has grown 8 times in the last 2 fiscal years. So this is an example how if you understand the demographics of the country well, 
you can tap on to it to create some successful entrepreneur ventures let's talk about the sixth point which is also a source of innovation which is changing perceptions now what do we mean by changing perception seeing a glass half empty as half full is an example of changing perception so in the market around us in the environment around us as students we always see some change in the perception a good example of this is the online learning so before the pandemic if you were sitting in front of the laptop or the mobile phone you or parents will would have reprimanded you but now the online learning has become a habit and it has become a part and parcel of our lives so the perception regarding online learning has changed a lot and that is the reason why so many edtech companies are now making good profits because of the boom in the online learning companies like byju's companies like an academy companies like udemy they are all doing well in the market because there is a fundamental change in the perception that apart from the brick and mortar schools students now need something more something additional and that gap has been filled by the online learning platforms so like this you may have other perception changing in the market like for example earlier before the pandemic going out and dining was kind considered a status symbol but that's no longer the case because now going out is almost prohibited and it is difficult so the fundamental changes in the perceptions can also be opportunities for innovators for entrepreneurs to start some startups in this particular area now let's move on to the last source of innovation which is nothing but new knowledge so what is new knowledge new knowledge is a synthesis of existing knowledge so what do i mean by synthesis some knowledge that has already existed and this innovator he synthesizes all that existing knowledge and converts it into something new and innovative so the key word here is synthesis of existing knowledge now talking about examples let's talk about the invention of the aeroplane in 1903 by wilbur and oliver wright also known famously as the wright brothers so this innovation of theirs was not only because of their efforts but because of the efforts of the mathematical theory of aerodynamics coupled with the invention of diesel engines by carl benz so it was carl benz who invented the first motorable wagon so this invention of carl benz coupled with the mathematical theory of aerodynamics gave rise to the aeroplane and its birth in 1903 so this is how new knowledge is synthesis by coupling together the existing knowledge so coming to the last and final part of the conclusion of this particular lecture we have summarized over here all the seven sources of knowledge we covered the unexpected incongruities in the market the process needs that requires to be fixed market structures which are changing demographics which can offer opportunities for innovation changing perceptions again they offer great opportunities to be innovative and entrepreneur and last new knowledge so as students of today we are business leaders of tomorrow also so if we train our mind to think and scan our environment based on these seven points that i just elaborated i think india would be a different place to be in in the coming years so this was the summary of the discussion on innovation and entrepreneurship so if you like this video please put your comments below and we will get back to you thank you